As demonstrated in Season 6 of the Clone Wars TV series, Order 66 was literally implanted into every clone trooper grown upon Kamino within the current canon. Activated by voice command to execute the order, a biochip implanted in the brain of the clones would ensure total obedience and cause them to view every Jedi as a dangerous threat that had to be eliminated immediately and at all costs. Of course, this is the canon version of events only, as legends saw Order 66 conducted quite differently. There were no biochips within the clones, and although many of them reacted with skepticism or hesitation to Palpatine's command, they acted because they were given a legal order, an order they had to follow as good soldiers of the Republic. But a question emerges from these two different version of events regarding the clone troopers. Why did the clones continue to serve the Empire after Order 66 within canon if their actions during the Purge were completely out of their control, and they never truly harbored any real resentment or hatred of the Jedi? Were the clones merely continuing to follow orders as seen in Legends, or was there still some influence from the inhibitor chips, wherein it may not have caused total obedience, but still enough for the clones to view the Jedi as a danger needed to be eliminated? In this video expose, I will explain why the clones continued to serve the Empire and hunt down the Jedi after Order 66 within the canon. The canon has demonstrated a number of examples where the clone troopers acted without question in furtherance of the new Empire, and to the detriment of the Jedi. Whether it be the clones who went to the Midrim Jedi outpost of Brightholm to create an inventory of Jedi artifacts, or the clones Commander Grey and Captain Styles who ruthlessly hunted a young Kanan, the canon is full of examples of clones viewing the Jedi as traitors in the immediate aftermath of the Clone War. But why do they hold this view? Unlike the clone troopers of Legends, they never made that initial decision in canon to act out against the Jedi and kill their former generals, as the biochip made that decision for them. And yet we see them in canon certain that the Jedi were traitors, and in some instances, continue to brutally hunt them down for the Empire after the war. Initially, I thought perhaps the biochips implanted within the clones still had some secondary control over them to further propel their obedience and hatred of the Jedi. But the latter example of Grey and Styles within the Kanan comic gives us the best look at the situation of the clones in the earliest days of the Empire, and why they continue to hunt down the Jedi within the canon. Having tracked the Jedi Padawan Caleb Doom, who would later take the name Kanan, to the planet of Lon, Captain Styles took the Jedi traitor into custody aboard an Imperial freighter. However, before taking Kanan onto the freighter, an excellent exchange happens between Styles and Kanan's smuggling partner Kazmir. When Styles tells Kazmir that he'll be executing a traitor and almost says to the Republic instead of to the Empire, the clone captain dismisses the error by stating that it doesn't matter which government he fights for, he merely has to follow orders. When Styles is later joined by Commander Grey aboard the Imperial Freighter, Grey is furious that Styles hasn't yet executed the Jedi, not because he wanted Kanan dead as soon as possible, but because it was merely a matter of duty for the clones, and he didn't take any thrill in seeing the deed done himself. But before Kanan could be executed, he regained his consciousness and attempted to sway the two clones. Kanan tried his best to set out the betrayal of the Republic for Grey and Styles, not as done by the Jedi, but by Palpatine. Further, having served with both clones under Kanan's master Deepa Balaba in the final days of the war, he attempted to get them to remember how much they respected the fallen master, and to question whether they truly believed she could actually be a traitor. Initially, Kanan's attempt failed, as the clones proceeded to carry out the execution, thus prompting Kanan to use the Force to throw them into the wall of the freighter and then eject himself into space. Fortunately for the Jedi Padawan, his smuggling partner Kazmir emerged from hyperspace to rescue him. But they were still in danger as the Imperial freighter, which could both outrun and outgun their small starfighter, began targeting them. However, it's at this point that Commander Grey came to his senses due to the words of Kanan. He told Styles that Kanan was right, as he remembered that Jedi Master Balaba was their hero. Further, the clone commander recognized that they followed Order 66 as if under some kind of spell, with no control over their own will and with no consideration for the previous battles they fought together. Although Grey realized that he never questioned for a second whether he should carry out Palpatine's command, the same couldn't be said in that moment, as Grey wanted to think about whether or not the order to execute Kanan was one they should follow. 
While Styles was unwilling, Gray had already made up his mind. The clone commander picked up a blaster and in his attempt to make it right, destroyed the cockpit controls of the freighter, taking its shields from 90% to zero and allowing it to be destroyed easily by the starfighters that rescued Kanan, thereby letting the young Jedi Padawan escape. This scene from the Kanan comic tells us everything that we need to know about why the clone troopers continued to serve the Empire, including hunting down the Jedi survivors after Order 66 within Kanan. Clearly, the biochips implanted within the clones were no longer controlling their actions following the initial purge. Ray and Styles acted nothing like Tup in the Clone Wars TV series, who gave us the best view of what it was like for a clone trooper to be under the control of the biochip when executing Clone Protocol 66. Styles and Gray didn't immediately kill Kanan like the biochip would have had them do, and in fact, they took no pleasure in having to carry out what they merely saw as their duty to the Empire. And of course, Gray was ultimately able to remember his previous interactions with Master Balaba and Kanan to refuse his orders and recognize that Order 66 was something he had no control over. Therefore, the primary element that caused the clones to continue to serve the Empire after Order 66 had nothing to do with the biochips, but with their conditioning for loyalty and obedience that was implemented upon Kamino. They were still acting as good, loyal soldiers who followed orders, and after the Clone War, their orders simply came from the Empire instead of the Republic. And like practically everyone else in the galaxy, the clones went along with the idea promoted by Palpatine that the Jedi were traitors and enemies. But while the biochips made it virtually impossible to reject Order 66, we see that the canon still has stories that are similar to those great clone-related stories of Legends, where they questioned and refused to follow Order 66. Except this time in canon, the decision is made not at the point of the Purge, but in its aftermath, when the clones regain their agency once again. So there we have it, why the clone troopers continued to serve the Empire after Order 66. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive hangouts and book discussions. If not for me... For Kazmir.